river that came up through Highland Park was called the North Branch, and we have a street called Branch Street over there near the old police station, if you're familiar with that area. The river came across through the park and through the area where the alternative school is, and it went around about Washington and up through York Valley, and then it went up what is now North Figueroa, and there was a spring at Springvale that was the headwaters of it, and it drained that whole area. And that stream had water year-round, had fish in it, and uh, it was a really a real delight. As I got more and more involved in researching these creeks and finding out where they were, I would be driving down the street and I would recognize that I was just driving over a creek. And this little playful child part of me came to life and I would just say, hello little creek. And you know, as you start to do that more and more, you kind of start to think of these buried creeks as your hidden friends, your little invisible friend, which gives you this idea that there's a spirit to this place. That spirit can be expressed through our actions. And so we developed this program called Stream Spirit Rising to involve the community in a group expression of that desire and longing to see this wonderful thing, a creek, be restored and present in our lives again. We're doing these workshops as part of our outreach program around the North Branch Creek, which used to run through Highland Park and is now buried in a storm drain. And we're making these masks because we want to find a way of honoring the history of this creek. There's water in the river in some place all year round, and it always has been. It's never been totally dry. Highland Park is a predominantly Latino community with a very working class base. It's surrounded by the communities of Montecito Heights and Mount Washington. In order to gather a sense of what this place used to be, we planned a Tales of the Arroyo Night, which brought together old timers from the community with the larger community to share stories and exchange ideas and histories. I played in the Arroyo when I was a kid, and it was already channelized, obviously, I'm not that old. I got to tell you, we didn't know a lot of the things that you can uh, read about in books today. We didn't know that it was called Povomit Paragna by the Tongva. We didn't know that in 1769, Gaspar Portola had uh, named it on the same day that he named El Rio de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Ángeles de Porciúncula. We didn't know that stuff. First, it was just picnic grounds that even the Californios came up before the Americans were here. The Californios would picnic up in this area. The Arroyo Seco ran from the mountains, its headwaters in the San Gabriel Mountains, down through this valley and then came out to the LA River. Its confluence is near where the 5 and the 110 freeway meet today. The north branch of the Arroyo Seco was a tributary stream, fairly large, that ran basically a circuit through Highland Park and then exited into the Arroyo Seco very close to where I'm standing here right now. That creek was partly fed by springs and partly by runoff just from storms. There are many springs in this area and seeps that continue to issue forth water even today. I'm a second generation Angelino. I was born at the old Queen of Angels Hospital. My story is more of one of mud and slime and frogs and crawdads and pollywogs. I found a worm! In other words, it was a young boy's haven. It was a perfect place to grow up in. Emily, look! Emily! When you see creeks, you see children. Uh, and I've traveled all over the world looking at urban streams, and they become the playground of children. We don't want to lose that playground for children because this is a formative experience for them. It pulls them away from televisions, away from computers, away from simulated games, and they get to experience the excitement of reality. They come down here and they, they see the life in the creek, even seeing wildlife in the city. This is going to be their experience of the environment. Really, these are outside education laboratories for children. 